Hey, cheers guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. I was gonna make a Black Friday video basically covering the top 10 items I have on Amazon for backcountry use and amateur radio. It's all stuff I've shown on the channel over the last few years, nothing new. I don't feel comfortable hawking a bunch of stuff and talking about why I bought everything. Uh, most of the items in that list, actually all the items in the list, have been shown on the channel over the last two and a half years. So if you wanna support the channel, check it out down below. But uh, this week I actually wanted to talk about something that I think is a whole lot more important and that is what I believe to be the future of off-grid communications. So it's probably important to define off-grid communication. I think that is a scenario in which primary forms of communication are impacted. Cell phone, internet, landline, satellites, and maybe the electrical grid. And in those scenarios, the only real solution, in my opinion, is radio, specifically amateur radio. Now, amateur radio is somewhat of a beast, in my opinion. I'm still fairly new to the hobby. I've only been doing it uh, on the air for about three years. And there's licensing involved, there's gear, uh, there's uh, a lot of practice that's involved in understanding how to use your equipment. And that just covers you. Now assume you want to talk to somebody else, not a random person, but you actually want to talk to Joe in the other county or your cousin in the other state. That requires a whole nother ball of wax of training. Um, it's doable. Uh, I have been working very hard to demonstrate that that is in fact possible. But uh, there's one area that I've been exploring and it is digital data modes. And I think there's an opportunity to change the future of off-grid communication using radio as a technology, using digital data modes as a method of sending information from station to station, either keyboard to keyboard chat, messaging, uh, you name it. And I think I have a solution. It's gonna be very anti-ham uh, because I am planning on taking a Steve Jobs approach with this technique. Let's talk about it. Sorry folks, I just had to kill a fly and its baby brother is flying around somewhere. But uh, let's get back to that Steve Jobs analogy. So. How many of you have an iPhone and how many of you have read the iPhone manual? Well, to my knowledge, there is no manual and you don't need one quite frankly because the damn thing is so easy to use. You pull it out of your pocket, you make your phone call, send your text message, open an app, browse the web. Amateur radio is nothing like that. In fact, uh, most of the applications out there when we're talking about digital data modes are unnecessarily complex. They have 600 page manuals and you would literally need a PhD to use them or at least spend three months trying to figure it out. I'm gonna change that. For myself and my group, I'm going to take the Steve Jobs model. This channel, uh, I believe I just hit 20,000 subs, so thank you, is going to take this course from this point forward. Um, I've been working on a software project called MCOM Tools and I believe it is the perfect vehicle for off-grid communication where we embrace that appliance uh, methodology. And really what I mean by that is I'm going to define a set of hardware, a set of radio equipment, and basically the stuff that you need to buy that's all known to work together to the point where it's like plug and play. Now, the second half of that is how do we make the software easy to use where we can do position sharing on a map, send SMS text messages, send email, keyboard to keyboard chat, file transfers. Well, we need an application that is able to have a very simple interface that doesn't require a freaking 600 page manual or any manual for that matter whatsoever. So that is the direction I'm going. Um, hopefully you guys are on board for this, but I also look at it like from the perspective of the military. If you take a look at military radios, they are channelized for a reason. All the operator needs to know is how to power it on, how to connect the antenna, which channel to hit, um, and they're able to make their contact. I wanna do the same thing for the amateur radio community. Um, my approach is probably gonna alienate a lot of people because in order for this to work and in order for it to be an appliance, it needs to have a lot of constraints. So you're gonna lose a lot of those advanced capabilities, but I think that's okay. So let's go ahead and explore that a bit more. In order to achieve this goal of having a simple to use appliance that is, doesn't require a whole lot in terms of a barrier to entry, um, I need to make this be an appliance and a platform that works together with known components. If we go back and take a look at Apple Computer, Steve Jobs was genius in realizing, hey, you need to basically control the hardware and the software so you can have the best user experience. Microsoft, on the other hand, was like, bring whatever computer, any hardware combination you want, 
and it'll run Windows. Well, they had a lot of problems getting it to work with every configuration. I personally don't want that mess. Um, it would be great if I could do that, but looking over the last 20, 30 years, that's a nightmare. So for MCOM tools to be the appliance and the easy to use off-grid, offline scenario, it needs to be built on a set of known components that are known to work together. And yes, this limits everything, but at the end of the day, guys, if you're an amateur radio operator, run the software that you're running today. Run it on whatever computer you want, whether that's an Intel-based computer or a Raspberry Pi. Run whatever application. There's no reason for you to use MCOM tools, but if you want to be able to have that easy to use experience where you don't need the PhD, the best that I can offer is to say, hey, get yourself a, a tough book. Get yourself a Yesu FT818. Get yourself the Digirig. Those three components are the core uh, set of components that will be known to work with MCOM tools. More to the point, I don't want to rely on the internet. Uh, believe it or not, even though I'm a technologist and a software engineer and consultant who's made a living online, I hate being online. MCOM tools is only going to be distributed on a thumb drive as a full-blown OS. And again, the reason for this is if there is a outage and I need to reinstall MCOM tools from scratch, I don't need the internet. I basically can run this as a live image just by plugging it into the computer, booting it up. And I've done it in such a way where you can opt to just run it as a live image in memory so nothing ever gets written to disk. So for operational security, all the tools to send your message are there. And when you're done, you power down and there is no trace of that whoever. Um, but if you optionally want to have a faster experience, you can install it. But the point is that um, MCOM tools has to be packaged as a full-blown operating system that is known to work with this hardware and the integration with the radio. And under the hood, it uses all of the amateur radio software um, behind the scenes. I don't expose it to the user. So it uses FL Digi, FL Message, Pat Winlink, R. Modem, uh, Direwolf, uh, modified version of Yak. And Again, most people don't understand what any of that means, but they're tools that I have chosen to customize and tweak so that you can have that experience of just booting it up, hitting MCOM tools, seeing the uh, tactical awareness map, and trafficking your position. Then let's say you want to switch over and send an email. You go over to the email section. The software will actually reconfigure the radio. It will reconfigure the software all behind the scenes to do that mode of communication. Then let's say, hey, you want to send a text message to your wife or your loved ones using radio. You go to the text message screen, and again, the software package talks to all of the software, it talks to the radio, everything gets pre-configured on the fly under the hood, and you send that text message. And the same pattern of basically the software being intelligent enough to fulfill your wishes as an operator in a very simple manner uh, requires that I do a full operating system um, and not package MCOM tools as a singular application. Because what's the point of introducing another application that requires that you reconfigure everything with those thousand levers that you have to pull? So without being too long-winded, the point here is that I'm taking a very opinionated view of how to solve this problem. For my group um, and for anybody who's interested in the future when uh, we get there, it really is going to be, there's gonna be a set of known hardware, known radio, known interface that will work together. And then there's gonna be a distribution of MCOM tools that you can have for offline use to reinstall a few years from now, you know, today, whenever. And that is really it. Um, I know that it feels like I'm alienating a large portion of the amateur radio community, but that's not my intention. My intention is to be a realist. I have a full-time job and I just wanna be an effective communicator. I don't wanna be uh, that guy that comes home at five o'clock from work and has a thousand messages on how to get this to work with the latest and greatest radio. Not my concern. Just like the military, the same way they standardize on SOP, standard operating procedures and equipment, this is the direction. I'm looking at this as an outsider for the amateur radio community and I'm looking to basically uh, have standards in place. So if something happens to my radio, I know that there are six other guys in my group that have the same radio. 
so we can afford to have some redundancy of equipment. It's the same things with a weapon systems and weapons platforms. I'm one of those guys that, you know, they're not sexy, but I like my Glock 19, my Glock 17, and I like my AR-15. I like standardizing on 9mm and 5.56. Five, period. There's a lot of cool stuff out there. 45 ACP is a great cartridge. But the point is, in terms of emergency communication, not screwing around with radio for the heck of it, I want to have rugged hardware, CF-20. This thing could probably take a bullet. Um, I want to have this radio that's been on the market for 20 some odd years. There's a reason why I chose the Yaesu FT-18 or 817 as the platform, is this equipment, these are tools. We're not you know, contesting whatever. So it may alienate a lot of people on the channel for that. I do apologize. Uh, for the most part, I think I'm going to do most of the MCOM tools updates themselves on Buy Me A Coffee. So feel free to uh, support me over there and read those posts. Uh, we'll continue to do experiments on this channel for radio. Uh, we're going to continue our No Random Contact series. But um, I just want to let you guys know where I'm going in terms of my personal time and dedication and contributions. They're going to be very narrowly focused on building an off-grid, offline, easy to use appliance for SHTF and emergency communications. So with that said, guys, I want to thank uh, everybody who is still hanging around with me. And uh, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. And that's where I want to go uh, for my communication goals for myself and my group. I want it to basically be, you buy this appliance. Yeah! Now you did.